AQA, A-level physics, refraction at a plane surface. This is the bit of the specification that we're going to be having a look at in this video. So what is refraction? So when a wave goes from one medium to another at an angle to the normal, uh, refraction takes place. It changes direction. Normal means at right angles. So this ray of light on this diagram is coming in at an angle to the normal. The angle to the normal is this angle here. That's the one that we're interested in. And what happens is it changes direction. Uh, and why does it change direction? Because its speed changes. In this case, because it slows down. And because it slows down, this angle here is smaller and it changes direction. What on earth has speed got to do with it? I wouldn't worry too much about this, but so the way I explain it is I think of a, a car going into a muddy field. And when a car goes into a muddy field, then it slows down because there's more friction. Uh, if the car goes in normally, straight in, then it doesn't change direction. But if the car goes in at an angle, then it does change direction if the driver doesn't do something about it. Now, why? Because this wheel here will slow down first. And because that wheel slows down, it's like the car will kind of swing round, won't it? If that wheel slows down first. And it's the same with wave fronts. If you imagine these wave fronts, going from air into glass, then this part of the wave front here will slow down first. OK, and so refraction will take place. The wave will swing round. Another one is lines of soldiers marching into a muddy field. Don't worry too much about it. All you really need to know is that it changes direction because the speed of the wave changes. It either slows down or speeds up. Now, the equations that we need to know. The first equation, N equals C over CS. Usually, I'm actually used to N equals C over V because C is the speed of light in air and CS or V, I, I prefer, is the speed in the substance. So I reckon that little S stands for the substance. OK, so basically it slows down uh, and because it slows down, the value of N in this equation is always bigger than one. Yes, and it bends towards the normal. So N equals C over V. So the speed in air divided by the speed in glass in this particular case. Now, if the first medium is air, then N equals sine theta one over sine theta two which is the GCSE equation. It's gonna get a little bit more complicated than that. Don't worry, later on, yeah? But this is called Snell's law. And remember that all of the angles are angles to the normal. So theta one is the angle to the normal, the angle of incidence. Theta two is also the angle to the normal, the angle of refraction. N equals sine theta one over sine theta two. Snell's law. Have a go at this pen paper calculator. And the answer is, there you go. So the refractive index of the glass 1.3. So the speed of light in the glass 2.3 times 10 to the eight. A little bit more practice, pen paper calculator. And the answers are, there you go. Now, uh, the equation is actually a bit more complicated. If the first medium isn't air, so here we have two substances, N1 and N2, and we've got two angles, theta1 and theta2, and the equation N1 sine theta1 equals N2 sine theta2. 
Okay, it's actually the same equation. If one of the media, for example, if N1 was air, then we say that the refractive index of air is one. And this equation basically simplifies into the one that we were using before. Okay, but N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two is on your formula sheet. It's the one you need to remember, the one you need to use. So have a go at this question. This is a transparent plastic block in water, uh, a ray of light from a laser. Uh, complete the diagram showing the values of all of the angles. And pen paper calculator and the answers are, there you go. Okay, so it's going into a denser medium to start with, so it will bend towards the normal. And then hopefully you did the second bit as well. When it leaves the glass block, it's going into a less dense medium, so it will bend away from the normal. It will actually end up going the, in the original direction at 45 degrees. And here are all of the angles. If you've done your maths right, hopefully you got them. FET simulations are brilliant. Uh, in, just check them out. There's loads of physics ones. There's biology ones and chemistry ones as well. Uh, and this one here is about refraction. And you can you can change all of the angles. You can drag that so that you change the angle of incidence there. OK, you can change the materials. You can change the refractive indices. Uh, it's fantastic. Have a play with it. It is free. Just do a search for FET, P-H-E-T. It's the University of Colorado. OK, now looking at this, what we have is a ray of light in glass uh, and it's going from glass to air. And so it's going into a less dense medium. So it is changing direction. It is bending away from the normal. OK, so that angle there is bigger than this angle here. It is bending away from the normal. And what we can do is we can change this angle and then something very, very interesting is going to happen. Notice that we get a little bit. We always get a little bit of reflection. When a wave hits a boundary, some of it always reflects. We always get, in this case, partial internal because it's inside the glass reflection a little bit of partial internal reflection but most of the light escapes most of the light gets out of the glass this ray escapes from the denser material however if we keep making this angle bigger and bigger and bigger then hopefully you remember from GCSE we get total internal reflection and that happens when this angle here is equal to or greater than a critical angle. When this angle is greater than a critical value, then all of the light reflects internally. Uh, yeah, and that is total internal reflection. And so we think of the light as being trapped inside the glass. The light can't escape from the glass. And the equation you need to know uh, sine theta C, C is the critical angle, sine theta C equals N2 over N1. Okay, remember that sine theta can't be bigger than 1, so in this case N1 would be bigger than N2. Total internal reflection. Some interesting things to do with it. Why do diamonds sparkle? Diamond sparkle because diamond has a very, very high refractive index. It's about 2.5. And so the, the diamond is cut so that the rays of light bounce around inside the diamond and they can't escape. Let's go to that color. So rays of light go bouncy, bouncy, bouncy inside the diamond and they can only escape at certain angles. So when you look at a diamond from a particular angle, lots and lots of light comes out and it sparkles. Uh, a use for total internal reflection is you can use prisms as mirrors. 
in things like uh, an SLR camera, single lens reflex camera, uh, in a periscope, in other optical instruments. Uh, see this glass prism at the top and the light goes bounce, bounce, bounce inside the prism. Yes, and, oh, and then it bounces off the mirror. In fact, I've done it the wrong way around. The light comes in there, bounces off the mirror and then goes in the viewfinder and that's you looking in the viewfinder so that you actually see what's coming into the lens of the camera. That's the idea of it. Anyway, prisms can be used as mirrors and they actually make better mirrors than mirrors do. And then fiber optic lamps. There's a groovy fiber optic lamp there. Uh, light gets trapped inside the fibers. Uh, what use is that? apart from fiber optic lamps is obviously to carry digital signals. So signals, digital signals, light pulses bounce around inside the optical fiber. Okay, digital signals are sent down optical fibers in the form of light pulses. The light is trapped inside the glass fiber. It's much, much cheaper than copper. So we need to know quite a bit about fiber optics. Uh, we need to know that we use something called a step index fiber. So the different parts of the fiber, we have the core, we have the cladding, and then there's some kind of a plastic coating on the outside called the buffer. And light travels inside the core and it bounces around inside the core. Uh, the cladding is made from a glass with a lower refractive index. So basically, if there's the core and there's the cladding, then light inside the core would reflect internally like that. Yeah, because this material here has a lower refractive index. Total internal reflection occurs at the boundary and the cladding also helps to protect the fiber for example, from scratches, uh, as does the buffer, and the buffer will stop other light getting into the fiber. Okay, um, here is a, now what I better do is just get rid of that there, uh, a question for you to have a go at. And the answer is in three, two, one, 80.5 degrees. Material dispersion. Okay, we put a signal through the fiber. We don't necessarily get exactly the same signal out. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, and we need to know what they are. Now, the first one, material dispersion. Basically, the refractive index depends on the wavelength of the light. This is how a, a prism works. Do you remember a prism? And white light goes in and then dispersion takes place and you end up with Roy G. Biv. And this happens because different wavelengths have different refractive indices. And so they travel at different speeds through the glass. Now this would obviously be a problem with a fiber optic cable. So what we do is we use a uh, monochromatic. So we use one wavelength uh, and it's usually laser because that's pretty powerful. So material dispersion is to do with dispersion due to different wavelengths. Modal dispersion uh, is dispersion which occurs because not all of the light travels the same distance. The light that travels straight through the fiber will travel the shortest distance. Any light which is kind of bouncing around at angles travels a bigger distance. And because of this, if we put a lovely square pulse in, because of modal dispersion, we get something called pulse broadening because the light that arrives first will be over there, the, the light that arrives last will be over there, and the pulses will be broader, shorter and broader. And this could be a big problem because basically the pulses might eventually start merging with each other, and then our lovely digital signal uh, is corrupted. It doesn't make sense. So what do we do about it is we use shorter and thinner fibers. If the fiber is thinner, 
then, I mean, this diagram here is very, very much exaggerated. If the fiber is very, very thin, then that will limit the amount of modal dispersion. And then absorption, some light is naturally absorbed by the glass, resulting in a smaller amplitude. So what we need to do is boost the signal at regular intervals, or it will just get the amplitude will just get smaller and smaller. So it needs boosting every now and then.